the protesters in Seattle, this really, I just, I have no words that there are people on the left actually defending this. Protesters in Seattle have set up what is a autonomous zone within the city of Seattle, and it covers about a six block radius. So there's a significant portion of the city, you know, not massive, but a significant part of the city that they have erected a wall and they have guards and they're checking people's identification coming in and out. They say that they're going to set up their own currency and they're basically saying they are an autonomous nation, you know, kind of like the Vatican in Rome, that they are an independent nation, no longer a part of the state of Seattle or sorry, the, the state of Washington, the city of Seattle or the United States of America, that they are their own country now. Which is hilarious to me on a number of levels because I thought secession was racist. That's what I was always told, that anybody even talking about secession, we heard this all the time when Southern states talked about it back when Barack Obama was in office, that even mentioning the word secession is racist because that's what happened with the pro-slavery South in the Civil War. That was the talking point that we always heard. And yet now that's exactly what Antifa has essentially done. They've taken over a spot of land. They have said that they are seceding from the Union and they are their own autonomous nation. I thought that was racist. I thought that was the whole point. And the funny thing is, and my buddy Justin brought this up, so I'm going to give him credit for that one. The first thing they did was build a wall. The first thing they did was establish a border, build a wall around it, and now they're checking people's passports in and out because they don't want anybody in there that they don't want in there. So they're basically creating a Donald Trump dream world where, <laughs> where they have a giant wall that keeps everyone they don't want out. And they only let people, <laughs> they only let people in that they like. <laughs> you can't make this stuff up. They, they essentially took the Donald Trump playbook to create their own country. I, I find that hysterical. Um, it's kind of like Arkham city. I don't know if you've ever played Arkham city. It's the Batman game by Warner brothers. And it is absolutely phenomenal. One of the best games that's ever been made. But that aside, what they have there is they have basically their own section of Gotham City that has been completely shut down and the criminals are running everything. That's basically what's going on in Seattle right now. There is a, a chunk of the city. And by the way, their, their headquarters is the old police precinct that they abandoned. And the mayor actually told them to abandon, which is ridiculous on a number of levels because of Things like equipment, uh, firearms, safety gear, uh, crime evidence that's, that is in a police precinct. But anyway, leave that aside for a second. It really is like Arkham City. It really is that they, they've established their own little uh, criminal hotbed within the city that's walled off to the rest of it. So, I don't know, maybe, maybe Batman needs to go in there and take care of it, take out all the Antifa thugs. But anyway. The thing that's funny about this, though, is there is such a, a blinding double standard because I always thought that seizing land from other people was wrong. Isn't that what we're always told every time anything re relating to Native Americans or Thanksgiving or Columbus Day comes up? That taking land from somebody else by force, that's wrong. Now, granted, I believe it actually is wrong, even though I think it's a mischaracterization of what happened between the Americans and the Native Americans to a great degree. Of course, there were some wrong things that took place, and some people did forcibly take Native American land. But, you know, a lot of that was purchased. But anyway, without getting off into the weeds on that, I thought that that was racist too. Seizing land from other people and claiming it as your own. I thought that was racist, but apparently it's not. It's okay if Antifa does it. And then there's such a double standard with the naming of, and, and I know that a bunch of people on the left were, were crying foul and outraged that the Trump administration and Attorney General Barr were talking about Antifa being designated as a terrorist organization. After this, I don't see how you could claim anything else. Because think about this. The left contends that Antifa is not a terrorist organization, constantly stands up for them and tries to justify their violence when they do things, despite the fact that they have called for a violent overhaul of the American government, despite the fact that they, on routinely, even before these protests started with George Floyd, for the past several years that Antifa's been operating, 
They attack random people that they disagree with. They'll attack you if you're wearing, for example, a MAGA hat. They randomly attack people just walking down the street they think might disagree with them. Uh, I remember them beating up that old guy in the parking garage. We've had 17 deaths since the protest started. 17 deaths associated with the protesters, some of them police officers. I mean, just horrendous stuff. Yet that also doesn't qualify them as a terrorist organization. They're looting and burning businesses. I mean, that is happening, of course, here recently, but that's been happening for a while now. When Ben Shapiro came to Berkeley, they started tearing up ATMs and burning down a Starbucks. So uh, this is not a, just a recent event. Antifa has been doing this for a long time. They've been inciting riots, obviously. They were the ones, and, and we actually did a video on this just a couple weeks ago, that Antifa is actually infiltrating a lot of these protests and specifically whipping the crowd up, uh, delivering mysterious pallets of bricks with shovels, uh, also going around and uh, inserting themselves into protests to try to stir the crowd up. We saw them spray painting and graffitiing that Starbucks on the video that the the lady there was saying, look, they're saying that this was Black Lives Matter, even though it's two white girls in Antifa suits. Uh, so they've been inciting riots for sure and trying to stir discord. And then calls for abolition of law enforcement agencies like the police, which they're calling for right now. They're saying defund the police, abolish the police. They're saying abolish ICE. Uh, they even held the ICE facility there in Washington state, held, it host held people in there hostage and took over the government building. And then you also have uh, them calling for open borders, which again is hilarious considering the first thing they did was establish a border when they took over a part of an American city. And then this, which would be full-on treason. I mean, please, anybody, explain to me how what they did is any different than when the state seceded. I'll tell you how that it's different. The states actually did have a government in place, and there was a vote of the people that preceded that. That didn't happen with Antifa. I'm not trying to justify what the southern states did, even though constitutionally you can make a pretty strong case that they had the right to do it. But in Antifa's case, there was no vote. There was no order. They didn't establish a city government. They just decided to take over a big chunk of, of Seattle there, and that they're going to establish their own government at some point. They didn't have a pre-existing uh, government and they didn't ask everybody's opinion that was living within that six block radius before they just took over it and made it into their own thing. These people are dangerous anarchists, terrorists. I don't see how anybody looks at all that and doesn't see that. And the funny thing about all this is that the same left that is constantly trying to claim that Antifa isn't terrorist, they're the very same ones that are saying that the NRA are terrorist and saying that, you know, they should be taken out and they should be listed as a terrorist organization. I cannot tell you the number of people, Ilhan Omar, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, actual Congress people holding elected offices, not just in Washington, but around the country in, in different state legislators, so on and so forth. I saw several governors and attorney generals saying the same, uh, attorneys general saying the same thing. They're saying that the NRA should be a terrorist organization, but Antifa shouldn't. Now, I just listed to you all the things that Antifa's members did. In the, NRA, in the NRA's case, the reason they say they should be listed as a terrorist organization is that people not associated with the NRA are doing very bad things with guns. That there are occasionally bad people in the country that have no affiliation with the NRA whatsoever that because of the NRA's lobbying and policies and because guns are readily available, that they get the, even though most of the time, the vast majority of the mass shootings that we see are done with guns that are obtained illegally. So the NRA's policy would have no bearing on whether those people got guns or not. And the only NRA member that has ever been a part of any mass shooting, a part of that story, was a guy in Southern Springs, Texas, who shot the mass shooter and brought him down. That's the only person that's ever been associated with a mass shooting in the United States that was an actual NRA member, and he's the one that stopped it. And yet somehow, the left can look at all of that information and say, Antifa, no, they're definitely not terrorists. But the NRA, oh yeah, they're definitely a terrorist organization. There's no question about that. 
No NRA member has ever done any of the things that they just, uh, that you could list off that Antifa has done, at least that we know of. And so the left trying to claim that because the, the NRA supports an actual part of our constitution, something that is part of our government, they say they're a bunch of dangerous radical anarchists, despite the fact they're supporting an actual portion of America's laws, as opposed to Antifa that is saying there should be no law enforcement and the people should just police themselves. And that, I think, may be the funniest thing about this whole call to hashtag defund the police. Okay, you want to defund the police, and you also don't want anybody to have guns. What's that going to result in? Only criminals having guns, and there will be no police to protect you from them. Also, if you defund the police, how are you going to get the guns from people? There would need to be some kind of law enforcement to round up all the guns to you know, carry out your policies. You can't do that if there's not police. So it's a really strange, really strange dynamic that they don't seem to really comprehend the, the fallout of what they are suggesting. But the thing is, and the thing that this story really shows how they've taken over a, a, several blocks of an American city, it shows that these people, as crazy as they are, as inconsistent as they are, as nuts as they are, are serious. They may be crazy, but they're not playing when they say that they want to overthrow the American government. They may be crazy, but they're 100% serious when they're saying we want to defund the police and abolish ICE and open up the borders and every other crazy cockamamie idea that comes out of their mouth. They're not playing here, and we need to realize that. These people are a legitimate threat to the American people, and they should be treated like domestic terrorists because that's what they are. My mother always said, if you can't say something nice about somebody, then you're probably talking about a leftist. Nah, I kid. But seriously, it would really help me out if you would like this video and subscribe to my channel. I'm sure my mom would appreciate it.